Philippine senators proposed several measures to fix Metro Manila traffic at the provincial bus ban hearing Tuesday, August 13. Senator Franklin Drilon asks to review the powers of the Metro Manila Development Authority or MMDA vis-a-vis -vis local government units. This comes after his fellow lawmakers contest the ban at the Supreme Court, saying the MMDA was overstepping its limits of power. We're not depriving uh, the LGUs of any power. We review given the chaotic situation because it has been brought out that uh, the reason for in the injunction correctly is that the MMDA admitted that they had no power, that the power belonged to the LGUs. And therefore, maybe it's an opportunity for us to review this uh, particular aspect because otherwise uh, uh, the implementer is hamstrung by the uh, lack of authority as found by the, by, by, by the courts. Public Services Chairperson Senator Grace Poe backs Drillon's proposal. Lumaki ng definition kasi ng Manila, eh. hindi na Metro Manila, Mega Manila na kasama ang Rizal, kasama ang Laguna at ang Batangas, di ba? So, tingnan mo ngayon, naghihimasok ng MMD kung saan-saan, pero sa totoo nun, wala naman sa tarabi silang kapangyarihan, dapat yan DOTR. Petitioner Neri Colmenares says the MMDA doesn't have the power to close down transport terminals, only local government units. The Metro Manila Council in March 2019 approved a regulation closing down all 47 provincial bus terminals along EDSA and prohibit provincial buses from loading and unloading. Senate President Tito Soto also says city streets around EDSA should be cleared of parked vehicles to allow private vehicles to take alternative routes. Buses will stay on EDSA. Senator Sherwin Gachalian adds it's time for Congress to pass the proof of parking bill he refiled, which requires a car buyer to present proof of parking space to prevent using streets as parking lots. Interior Secretary Eduardo Año insists it is prohibited for cops to receive donations. In a statement, Año says, quote, Public service is a reward in itself. Anyo's comments come just days after President Rodrigo Duterte told policemen they may accept cash gifts from donors after succeeding in operations as long as it comes from their generosity. Anyo says employees under the Department of the Interior and Local Government, including police officers, will be held liable if they receive or solicit gifts of monetary value. Interior Secretary Eduardo Año wants to revive the anti-subversion law that previously made it a crime to be a member of the Communist Party of the Philippines or CPP. Former President Fidel Ramos repealed the law nearly three decades ago as he went on a peace process with the communist guerrillas. But Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara disagrees with Año, saying, quote, Mere membership in the CPP is not a crime unless overt criminal acts are committed. Being leftist is far from being terrorist. Guevara suggests amending the Human Security Act instead. This comes as the Philippine National Police said it filed kidnapping and other charges against Anakbayan leaders because of a missing 17-year-old senior high school student. But Anakbayan on Monday, August 12 says the missing teen is free and safe but not ready to resurface due to threats. Senator Bato de la Rosa suggests increased police patrols at schools to deter communist recruitment. But presidential yeah. spokesman Salvador response. Panelo doubts the effectivity Secretary of Secretary. De La Rosa's proposal. The um, presence of police can prevent any crime being committed inside the campus. But recruitment, I don't think na it will solve. When I want recruitment, doesn't even have to be in schools. Mm. Local news, Pasig City Mayor Vico Soto warns barangay officials of sanctions for closing off public streets. This comes as local governments across the country race to comply with the directive to clear all public roads before the end of September. In a Facebook post, Soto takes a jab at the practice of charging motorists for stickers in exchange for access to public roads. In Quezon City, Mayor Joy Belmonte says around 200 vendors pay 80 to 150 pesos every day to a private company at a makeshift market under the Luzon Avenue flyover, amounting to at least 16,000 pesos a day and 480,000 pesos a month. 
Belmonte summons the company owner but the administrator could not show a contract or an updated business permit. Belmonte has been going around in line with the city's clearing operations which cover areas occupied by illegal vendors. Hong Kong Airport Authority suspend check-in processes Tuesday, August 13. This comes after thousands of pro-democracy protesters flooded into the airport for the second consecutive day and blocked passengers from entering the departure area in the terminals. On Monday, August 12, flights to and from Hong Kong International Airport were also cancelled. In the midst of the protests, Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam holds a press conference and faces media onslaught. Can I continue to answer? No! Please, I'm going to restore this for the city and the people of Hong Kong. Okay, I'm going to talk about the police and the people. The barrage continues as she abruptly leaves the podium. The unrest in Hong Kong has been going on for 10 weeks, triggered by the controversial China extradition bill. Lam then suspended the bill, but Hong Kong citizens call for her resignation.